at 43, I had a question coming out of chapter 6, number 79. And here we were given information on the duration of a particular type of criminal trial. They were told We were told it was normally distributed, that it had an average length of 21 days and a standard deviation of 7. So our variable is the length of time for this particular type of criminal trial, and the units are days. And there you can see my distribution, right? They're telling me, hey, it's normally distributed, meaning I know I'm going to make a bell curve. The mean's 21, so I'm going to put 21 under the peak. And then I'm going to use sevens to help me scale out my x-axis, all right? And I know I just messed this one up. I'll unmess it up in a bit. I just want you to see where all of that's coming from. Okay, so with that, now that I have my distribution, well, let me put it in yellow. All right, again, I'm going to put my x variable. I'm going to label it on my x-axis, and there are its units. Every numerical variable has units. I put x along my x-axis, probability along my y. It's analogous to when we put x in the top row of our PDF table back in chapter 4 and p of x in the bottom row of our PDF table, but now we're labeling our axes with x and p of x. So the first part of this question, or I guess technically this, the C part, it says if one of the trials is chosen randomly, find the probability that it lasted at least 24 days. So when you hear the phrase at least, that's like saying at least math symbol greater than or equal to, right? That's the math symbol we would use. But if you hear something like at least 24, that's 24 or more days. So I actually technically could have put a greater than or equal to here. It doesn't change the numerical answer, but if, if you want to put the greater than or equal to, and as I hear it, I think I probably should have put a greater than or equal to, um, that would be the symbol there. But again, it's not going to change the numerical answer because the equals to part of probability, there's no area under that curve, so we're not going to pick up anything numerically. All right, so what I would do then is I would start with my x-axis. I would look at x is greater than or equal to 24, and I would find 24 on my x-axis. And it's right around here. And the reason I know that is because if my standard deviation is 7, and I want to go 1, oops, why isn't it working? 1, 2, oops, excuse me. 1, 2, 3 deviations above, and maybe 1, 2, 3 deviations below. If I want 1 deviation above, that would be um, 21 plus 7 is 8. And then I would be at 35, and then I would be at 42, and then I'd be down here at 14, 7, and 0, something like that. So 24 is going to be wedged in there. Now let me erase all of that. We don't need all of those tick marks, but I do want you to see them getting played out. All right, and let me put my little 24 back here. Now because I have a greater than or equal to symbol, I'm going to go 24 or higher which is going to take me to infinity. So that's why you see me putting 24 for my low, infinity for my high, and then the back two are always the mean and standard deviation. And when I shaded this area right here, if I take a look at what I shaded, that definitely looks like less than half to me. I mean, it looks more than 10%, but definitely less than half. And the number I get is 33%. That seems to match my graph. So keep in mind, whenever we're talking about probability, right, that's always area under a curve. So, oops, let me write under. So the number that I get from my calculator output should match what I've shaded. And what I mean by that is if I had crunched this number and got something like 78%, it would have been like a red flag. Oh, I should probably put that in red. It would have been a red flag. That's my best drawing of a flag because 78 doesn't match this graph. So your graph, the area you've shaded, and your number should match up. If they don't, something went a little bit wrong. So you just want to have that there as a check. Okay, so then part D says, find the probability, oops, excuse me, I'm reading the wrong one. <laughs> part D says 60% of all trials are completed within how many days? So here I actually gave you a percentage. Oops, let me put a highlighter on there. I gave you a percentage. So whenever I give you a percentile, you want to use inverse norm. And when we put in the mean and standard deviation, we get that the 60th percentile was about 22.773 days. All right. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.